Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guest is Ms. Jennifer Kishimura, president of Cat Friends, a nonprofit organization based in Honolulu, Hawaii. The topic today is trap, neuter, release, or return of feral cats. Cat Friends' goal is to control the population of feral cats in a humane manner by trapping, spaying, and neutering. And first of all, I want to again welcome Ms. Jennifer Kishimura, who is the president of Cat Friends. And thank you, Jennifer, for joining me. And can you introduce yourself and to my viewers out there? And what, what is it that Cat Friends and all of those good things that you do? Well, we started in 1999, and we became a nonprofit in 2002. We decided to form an organization solely to spay and neuter because we didn't want to open another sanctuary to fill it up in, within a day or two. So we thought if we can reduce the population humanely by trapping and spaying and neutering, that would help substantially because our, our climate here uh, is conducive to breeding and we don't have natural predators so mm -hmm. our goal is to um, manage colonies um, so if there's a feeder they need to be actively trapping and uh, monitoring the colony so there's no breeding. Mm -hmm. Now m my background is, uh, is a, as an environmentalist I'm always concerned about the ecosystems and native species and and the, their demise and but I have to, I want to publicly thank you for doing something that others dare not to. But there's a lot of discussion out there and a lot of, um, you know, pointing the finger and disruption in those people that are trying to do something. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And it, it's, it's a task, I know. And I also know that it's, it's something that uh, not many people can appreciate. It. They treat this whole effort, trap, neuter, release, as being a problem rather than a portion or a solution. It's not the only solution, right. but c putting it with marrying it with other things, it helps. So well, we're tell very us, why did you get started again? What prompted well, you, motivated well, you? Well, we're sensitive to the environmental issues, so our purpose is to reduce the population of the cats being out there. Mm -hmm. So it reduces the impact it has on the environment. So it's definitely a positive. Um, there's no way to just trap all the cats and remove them um, because it creates a vacuum effect where more cats will come in. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the humane way to do it. People trap and euthanize. Um, that costs more for one thing. Our services, we are all volunteers um, and we always need more volunteers too. We um, loan out traps to people. If they have a colony that they're feeding, they can borrow a trap from us, trap the cat, bring it into our clinic. We have usually about three clinics every month. And we'll, we're over 2,400 cats we fixed already this mm -hmm. year. And we're going to be beyond 4,000 by the time this year is over. And every year we do this. Now, there are people there sitting paused. What, you, did you hear that number that she just quoted or cited? How weird and how bad that is, that number of cats. But the reality is, these are cats that you and your volunteers, who we will talk about, uh, go out, trap on their own time, right. at their own expense, and bring them. They didn't put them out there. See? No, these cats yeah. were there. They were either abandoned or they were bred, born there. Uh, most of the cats were dumped at mm -hmm. some point or they strayed from their owners. So they're actually called community cats as opposed to feral cats mm -hmm. because some of them are semi-friendly, but they may not be deemed adop adoptable, meaning they can't sit on your lap. So they pretty much have no place to go but where they are. Now, for the viewers out there who's watching this and, and if they're sitting on the fence, well, I don't believe it, like myself, we need to do something. Even myself, uh, as reluctant as I am to get involved to the fullest extent, I don't see anything else happening, anything aggressive and humane that I would be part of other than your program. And not just your program, but the TNR program. Mm -hmm. and, and as many people frown on it, I myself used to frown on it and, and make funny jokes about it. But then it came to realization that what's left? Euthanization. And what I've also observed now, because I took it upon myself to get involved and observe what was happening. Mm -hmm. You find colonies. There's a problem there. Sometimes the, the URI, UR, URI mm -hmm. the infections, which causes their eyes to pop out or right, fall out. Right. And, do we as human beings want to be responsible for knowing that people are introducing them to the wild and then you have these diseases and uncaring? So 
Well, share the them. upper respiratory infection is not contagious to people. It's just with the cats. So when we do see cats that are sick in these colonies, we do pull them and get veterinarian care mm -hmm. uh, when we're when it's possible. Um, there's a bunch of people talking about toxoplasmosis these days, and um, the monk seals that have perished, they are saying it's because of the toxoplasmosis from mm -hmm. the cats, but there is no proof of that whatsoever. They're doing all these studies right now to pr disprove that, <laughs> that uh, claim. Well, I, I have a few comments, not unkind comments about that, but <clears throat> and I won't go into them in detail, mm -hmm. but I would say the cats in the wild are being used by people that can't get a job or make a job, and so they create a, ha a fear and saying these are the things that are happening, uh, federal agencies that do that. Yes, cats eat birds and cats do go to the restroom, mm -hmm. but also these agencies should be turning their sights on and training their sights on people and law that go and abandon these animals. Exactly. And, and not view you or your efforts as a problem. Right. There's a colony that we have, a managed colony at um, one of the parks, and we have a contract with the property manager there, and they installed cameras. So we had the first person uh, charged with abandonment last mm -hmm. year, uh, and he was fined just a you know a small token. <laughs> but at least he was he he didn't understand that it was illegal to abandon animals. So I think more publicity needs to be out there so people know that is not the right thing to do. If you wanna if you wanna get rid of your pet find a home for it yourself or take it to the Humane Society, their open door admission. They'll take any animal that is brought to them. Mm -hmm. But don't dump it into a colony thinking, oh, someone's feeding, it will be fine because most of the time they don't survive. You know, people can be as cruel as your imagination can allow you to run. Mm -hmm. And that is, it, recently we recovered a mother and three kittens that someone placed in a bag mm -hmm. and tied the bag and left the mother and the kittens on the hot pavement mm -hmm. there at Sand Island at the bridge there. Unfortunately that's a common occurrence all yeah. over the island, different stories like that. And yet stories. that situation does not rise to the level or get the attention or the scorn of the people sitting at home or the environmentalists that are sitting at home or in their groups being critical of the caretakers right. or the people that are feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, something should give yeah. there. I mean, and, and do you get an outreach from government entities, uh, uh, state, yeah. or environmental groups? We do not. Um, our main purpose, we, we don't want to encourage people feeding without managing the colony, meaning they're trapping actively, keeping the population at, so it doesn't uh, increase at mm -hmm. all or it decreases over time through natural attrition. But um, we don't have any government support. We have um, all our donations are from individuals, private donations, and we do things like Food Lands Give Aloha um, and projects like that too to raise funds. Mm -hmm. So all of our funds, we are all volunteers with, with the exception of the um, vet and vet staff. And um, we charge people $5, the vets charge us $30. So Cat Friends makes up $25 per cat to be fixed. So it adds up very quickly go, go when you're fixing. To, see, this is the good deed, this is the good side, and, and, and right. it gets overshadowed by the naysayers or the people who are critical because mm -hmm. they, the right thing is to protect the environment. But again, you're saying that you get donations Mm -hmm. And and a, a lot of the donations of personal money that people are pumping in, it you know. Correct, and myself <laughs> included, and all the other people that volunteer, we put a lot of funds directly into so the program. So you you infusing money, your own personal money, and some donations, and mm -hmm. you take that money, and you hold it, and you charge the individual who brings a cat in mm -hmm. five dollars. Right, and but then the, in turn, the vet will charge us thirty dollars, which is a discounted rate for a vet, but right. uh, because we're doing it at our clinic but it's still, uh, it adds up when you're paying $25 per cat and we're fixing 4000 That's a, a well-kept secret because, see, most people know you as being those people that, who are being irrational and, not, you know, just cat crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's far f removed from that. Well, we want to decrease the population of the community cats. We don't want to be increasing. So we don't want cats to have kittens. We have enough out there. We don't want to encourage people breeding cats or letting their pets have kittens. 
It mm -hmm. just, uh, that's against what we believe in. What are your recommendations to viewers that are watching this uh, to say to prevent increase in population? What measures can they take? Uh, or getting, taking the animal, having it adopted, if they're going to be moving or s their parents die and they got the cat and they don't right. want to keep it, what are you suggesting? They can list on Craigslist and screen the people. They can post uh, notices at most vets' offices. Some pet stores will allow notices to be posted. But the main thing is we want to encourage all of those pets to be fixed before being adopted out because, unfortunately, the people that adopt sometimes are lazy. They don't get it done, and oops, there's a, the cat got mm -hmm. pregnant and so forth. So we want to encourage all people's pets to be fixed. Well, nope. even if they're indoor only, it, it's a healthier thing that they um, are much healthier when they're sterilized. And we, we're in a, a tropical setting, Tim, and so, as you pointed out, they are uh, likely to be able to mate three times a year. Yes, Whereas on the mainland, in a cold climate, how many times? Once? But usually once a year. So, right. so we kind of have kitten season year-round, unfortunately. Right now is peak kittens. Um, mm -hmm. Just so. So we're going to come back after this break that we take, but uh, we'll talk about it. what can people look for, you know, when people see cats out in the wild and say, oh, there's another cat. They don't know that it's neutered. So there's a way of telling they've, that they've been neutered. Right. And you can share that with us in some of the pictures. We will demonstrate that. But again, volunteers, could you give your address and contact sure. information so that volunteers or people that want to donate to you? Um, we have a website, it's highcatfriends.org, and our phone number is 226-4561. So the best way to contact us is through our website, highcatfriends.org, and then you can uh, go on to email there, or it has our phone number as well. Our clinic is located on School Street, North School Street, and um, our address and all the details are on the website. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a break shortly here, and uh, my guest is Jennifer Kishimura. She's the president of Cat Friends Hawaii, uh, Cat Friends, and we're talking about trap neuter release. I'm your host, Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii. We'll be right back shortly. Aloha and welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today my guest is Ms. Jennifer Kishimura of Cat Friends, an organization concerned with the population control of cats through trap, neuter, and release and in a humane manner. So uh, we were talking about uh, Cat Friends and the phenomenal work that you're doing out there uh, because you, I want to say clearly that you're not collecting cats on one side of the island and move transporting them un unlike what people want to believe you're actually we're uh, fixing them in a specific area and returning them to the exact same to that area. site right right and um, and if people go out to a park for instance if they see a cat with an ear notch it will mean the cat has already been sterilized so it cannot breed mm -hmm. so any cat that we see in these colonies that does not have a, no a notch we will trap and take into our clinic to be fixed Several times we've found pets that have been lost, which has been great um, because people will trap them thinking it's a, a, just a feral cat or a community cat and it's a missing pet. 
a lot of times it's unfortunately abandoned pets that people find um, and they don't want them back. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the way to tell if the cat's been fixed or not. The right ear is a female cat and left ear is a male cat. On the screen you have a female cat there. The notch. The is notch is on the, on the right for the female cats. Right, and L male, left is male. Yes. So if, if people don't understand it, just ask the cats, which is your left or right side? <laughs> Either way, they're fixed, so they're gender neutral now. <laughs> right. Well, one of the sad things that we've, we've learned, you, you hit on it a bit, uh, is that people, neighbors will steal neighbors' cats. And dump them and in And dump them, will take them and right. transport them across the island and dump them. I mean, that well, it's in illegal itself, for one, it's plus a, it's inhumane. But it happens, and, it and happens. we find on occasion, as you've found, where you, each cat also, when you neuter them. We microchip them. It so, has a microchip. Right, so, so we can trace that microchip back to the owner. Mm -hmm. So uh, one instance we had, we had a cat, and it had been lost for three years, and we found the owner because of the microchip. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing to have all your pets microchip, dog or cat. So uh, these are things that people don't know, which is a benefit. I mean, mm -hmm. we are not a cruel nation of people. We, we are sensitive. It's just sometimes we act emotionally just without thinking. But uh, what I have observed and what is so painful is to when you walk into a colony and or you see cats and one has blind and they're just fluid and they need medical care, but you don't see an army of people. You don't see an, an, an army of ecologists. You don't see an army of anyone other than the, the cat friends, volunteers, or people that volunteer, private mm -hmm. citizens, that are out there addressing those points. Because right. uh, what I've learned, government is not going to pay per diem to overnight or holidays. No. or And you've got to be out there 24-7 because right. people are constantly introducing. And, and animals do wander. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so today you have a colony that has nine cats, so let's say, that's been neutered. Everything's flowing well. You come back. And there's someone's a, dumped a someone handful of kittens. Hand exactly. So what we try and do is pull those kittens. If we can socialize them and find homes for them, we do that through different organizations, finding homes. We used to do adoptions ourselves um, through Petco, but now Hawaii Cat Foundation, Joey's Feline Friends, Hawaiian Humane Society, they do uh, most of our adoptions. Mm -hmm. So if you were to assess this and give us a, uh, a gauge, uh, how do you think you're doing on the overall population? Though? Or is it, do you think you're winning ground, not just on the population of cats, but mm -hmm. winning ground with the other entities that are concerned? Are they welcoming you or reaching out to you? We've said earlier, you said not very many of them, mm -hmm. but do you see any glimmer of hope in them changing their posture? Some of them do because they realize without us doing anything, the population's getting worse. Um, I was banned from a harbor um, from trapping and neutering, and unfortunately the population has gone up tremendously in one year because mm -hmm. of that. And they're trying to ban feeding, so there's a lot of issues there, but the best thing we can do is just keep trapping, neutering, and someone responsibly feeding, not just throwing food around, but have certain areas that are designated for feeding. Yeah, and, and, and I know the, the, the harbor you're talking about, Kehi, I've gotten about six complaints, and the management there seem to be using the, the, the cat feeding and that cat TNR program mm -hmm. as part of a uh, retaliate, a tool, a weapon, they weaponize the actual feeding, and so now the population has increased because they ordered the person to stop feeding. And I am not allowed to trap on property. Right, and, so. and so they get their point across, mm -hmm. but then we see an explosion of cats in that population. So again, it, it's, it's disheartening to, to see how it operates. It's very short-sighted. They're not seeing the big picture. If you keep uh, uh, we need a very uh, strict policy of where to feed, how to feed, when to feed, how much to feed. Um, so the colony, uh, there's no really colony caretaker there anymore. There's a feeder, but I don't, uh, you know, they are not part of an active program. They and, need and to be actively th There's a fa large fallacy here, something that's not being uh, said, and that many people are hiring, agencies are quietly hiring uh, exterminators to go in and trap and kill them. Correct. 
Now, what does it involve? Just, I don't want to shock my viewers, but what does it involve, the euthanasia? How is it done uh, when they trap them? Could you walk well, me through that? Well, it depends on the uh, organization that's doing the trapping to euthanize. So uh, they are supposed to be uh, taking them to the Humane Society to be injected and euthanized that way. DLNR has different uh, rules, um, military bases. They, you know, bellows, they used to shoot them in traps. Take a twenty-two rifle and shoot them right there. And it could be a, it could be a, someone's pet. They don't know, they just shoot them in the trap. Mm -hmm. They don't scan them first. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that, um, we've tried to work with the military and they haven't been very open to trap new to return. And they're the ones that seem to have more of the cat problems than anywhere else because mm -hmm. they're just trapping, removing, and there's plenty of food sources on bases. Yeah, I, that's a sore spot with me because many of these people that sit in Augur that the caregivers or the cat trappers and the TNR people mm -hmm. are evil, but I don't see them speaking out and being as verbal and objecting to new buildings being built or parking lots being built, you know, and they say, well, right. don't, uh, don't feed the cats because they'll kill the birds and, and take Walmart, for example. There was a massive colony uh, attempt to control that and, and they were frowning on it mm -hmm. and said, you stop feeding them, order people to stop feeding, even threaten with the rest. And then because they want to protect birds and mm -hmm. I too want to protect birds. So do but, I. But months later it becomes a super block and no birds could find its way around. It can't find a pebble, a kernel of corn. Right, so because of cement. The, yeah, so something doesn't why, it just don't match up, you see. Right. Our, our love for it, we, we are scientific about it, but the reality, what we really do, I don't really think we care about managing resources. I think we've gotten caught up in that they're evil and we're not. We're the managers of the environment. Mm -hmm. But their words don't match their actions. I so agree. again, I applaud you. And, and so with this, how does one go and volunteer with your organization? I want to emphasize that. And um, the best thing to do is go online, highcatfriends.org. And there's a sign-up sheet for registration for um, our spay-neuter clinics. And then we also have a trap loan um, availability so people can come. They put down a deposit on the trap of $100. They usually write a check, and then as soon as they return the trap, they get the check back. So we don't cash the check. It's mm -hmm. just if they don't return the trap. So we make them accessible to everybody. That, and if we have people that are invalid or not able to drive, we do have volunteers that offer to transport. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people out there, but we need more volunteers all the time just to keep the clinics running. Yeah, well, here, here's the downside, one, one of the negative things about TNR. Mm -hmm. That is, if you are a cat feeder, you're likely to end up with a house full of cats because they all uh, win your heart, they worm their way into your heart, and you just, you can't let them leave them out there. I can't leave this guy out here. I uh, have to confess, I have four of them that I just couldn't leave. In fact, uh, you feed them and you, you're making sure they get the medicine and right. not breathing. And the next thing you know, they're in your car <laughs> and not, not wanting to get out. So what that brings me to, I'm, I'm trying to get to, is that many of them have already been acclimated to human beings and circumstance right. found them out in the wild, either for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the cruelest things to acclimate an animal or condition an animal to be part of a family and, then, part, and humanize them and then in turn just abandon them. Agreed. That, that's to me, it, forget all of the science and all of that, it's, mm -hmm. it's still a... That's a, cruelty. It, it, yeah. And so, uh, like me, many of you out there, I invite you to join in, go to Cat Friends, and uh, you too will have a house full of cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. If you're just a trapper, you will spay, neuter, and return them. But you got to have good restraint, man, because well, I'm married, so that's my <laughs> restraint. There, I have five cats, <laughs> so that's pretty good for uh, a person yeah. that runs the organization. But but you like understand this. what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, it's you you see them and you it's know well, this yeah. animal has been conditioned mm -hmm. to human beings, mm -hmm. and now he's ripped. He doesn't fit in the wild. He doesn't right. fit in here, and, and it's Sort of, and now there are some that you, the males, for example, with the huge heads mm -hmm. that have not been neutered, it's just roaming right. is quite likely to be responsible for fathering many of the cats. So right. you only need one male in a 
Well, and they'll father the kitten, all the, they can impregnate all the females in the colony, absolutely. And then if there's no one in that colony, they'll go on to another colony. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, those cats um, that haven't been fixed often spray, so they're hard to bring indoors as a pet, mm -hmm. even if they are friendly. So, again, I appreciate it. We're coming down at the last minute, and, and I don't, I don't want to end this conversation, but is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers and listeners out there? Um, I would just say please get involved. Um, we always can use help. Um, donations are appreciated. Um, go to our website, please. It's highcatfriends.org, or you can call us at 226-4561. And the more assistance we get, the more cats we can fix. Yeah. And I'd like to say in closing, we need to show a little more compassion. And, and in doing so, uh, it makes a better place for all of us. I, contrary, I'm not going to sit here and be Gandhi or anyone. I don't pretend to be that. But once you're there and if you're fair about it, you know that cats controlling their population because they don't have a natural prey here, a predator here. Exactly. And they don't belong in the wild. But the fact is that they are because human beings in our way of life have put them there, placed them there. Right. No fault of the cat. So we need to, in combination, in concert with all aspects of it work with the science community, the biological concerns, the humane society concerns, and all those military concerns, mm -hmm. all of those. And one thing that really gets me is that when people move here, they adopt pets. They know they're going to be leaving. There In should be a years. rule that say, mm -hmm. if you're going to adopt an animal, you must carry it with you or be prohibited from, because those animals find their way dumped in the parks because mm -hmm. those we people... We get a lot of, unfortunately, military dumps and um, we've met with military personnel higher up and unfortunately it's a very challenging uh, upward battle trying to get them to agree to that. And we need to make progress and see a change in that. We're not demonizing the military, it's just a reality. Yeah, just search it. I mean, there's wonderful military families, of course. I had one girlfriend that took 12 cats back to the mainland with her. But um, a lot of the cats that we do find abandoned are from military families, unfortunately. Well, Jennifer Kishimura, thank you for joining thank me. Thank you. I appreciate you joining, and, and especially the last minute. I'm, I'm always the last minute person, so. Thank you, Thank you for uh, joining me on Eyes on Hawaii. My guest, Ms. Jennifer Kishimura of Cat Friends, go to their website and view what they do. And uh, if you want to volunteer or donate, please do. They need your help. Aloha and thank you. This is Carol Cox, your host for Eyes on Hawaii. And thanks for Jay Fidel, the executive director, and uh, Bob Lynch, and uh, Ray Sangalong, and thank all of you for joining in and helping us get this message out.